we're waiting two years to get married. This is news to my ears. Now we're waiting two years to get married? Okay, cool, bet. No, Heard you. Heard you. You did. You did. Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan. It's time to put some whiskey in your water and sugar in your tea because we're going for another round of Love During Lockup. There's a big little hold up for Ayuna. Hold up. Ladies man Ricky Poo is talking dirty. I didn't wear breathable underwear. Ashanta has an epiphany. And this is why you don't date nobody in jail. And Andrew files bankruptcy. It did end up going over budget by a thousand dollars. Thank you for joining us and big love to those who have subscribed, you beautiful people, and a flambéed knickerbocker glory to the members of the Lucan Manor. First up on today's little jaunt is with Ayona and Jamal. Then it's time for Ayona to meet the family. Now I've got to apologize for the quality of this footage. I can only find this eye-blistering 720 version, which if that means nothing to you, is somewhere comparable with a potato. Anyway, she's been driven to said family by her brother Jalik. I like Jalik. He's got a sense of humor and a sense of mischief. That is my favorite one-off character this season. So what makes him so fun? Y'all finna get married when, uh, when you get out? Yeah, look at the face. He's uh, four years himself, and I'm sure he's in every trick in the book. Whereas Jamal seems like he may have had every trick on the corner. But don't you worry, that old silver tongue of his bursts into action. <laughs> he's having a whale of a time. It's like he can sense all that sweating going on in the background. Good job, Jalik. And after a not at all suspicious massive pause, he finally replies. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like that, like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like that's the goal. He seems to repeat words when he's asked a difficult question, like for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. He even repeats stuff in a lovely Chinese accent. Yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, Ordinarily, I can see this could be an awkward spot. On one side is the emotionally explosive girlfriend, who needs to hear the irrational, crazy in love version of the answer. You know, the one with the getting married as fast as possible because you're so infatuated, living and breathing each other's existence. Yeah, you know what that BS he's been feeding on the phone about forever and always. Because you know what they say about forever and always? It's an anagram of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Rosie Veal Wafer or something? I don't know. Anyway, on the other hand is the male family, who wants to hear the rational sane things and be reassured you they have the best of intentions. I imagine you too, my beautiful muffin, have been in such a position where you have to balance the love rhetoric that you have with your lover with the sensibilities that the family want to see. So let's see the master at work. He was hoping to wait like he could have been like at least two years, but we don't know what's gonna happen in two years. Did you see it? Uh, we can pinpoint the moment when she went from harmonious to super critical. And there it is. So she says, We're waiting two years for what? It's like when a parent dares their child to repeat the thing they just said, or else they'll catch themselves a whole pallet of whoop for their little asses. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, mother. Lover. Say what one more goddamn time. But guess what? Not only does he repeat it, but he dumps out a few fresh layers, just in case he didn't mess it up enough the first time. You don't want to just get married right. and just like... You want to get dug in? Yeah, you don't want to get married straight away after all the talk and promises, no, no. You want to wind up the woman with anger issues by sweeping away all the dreams she had. Yeah, it'll be fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm confused. But Jalik is still having a great time. <laughs> Good job, Jalik. See, he gets the joke. You know, the relationship joke, so why not laugh it off? But the punchline is a bit too much for Iona, who, as you may be about to subtly tell, is beginning to lose her sang -froid. We're waiting two years for what? Which is French for losing her shit. We're still waiting okay. two years for what? That silence there, do you know what that was? That was the gentle tide rolling out on a delightful sandy beach, the trickle of water revealing hidden secrets and lives beneath our gaze. And as you look up to the horizon, you see there's a bloody great tsunami. Man, it's got the hump. Oh, so we're waiting two years to get married. This is news to my ears. Now we're waiting two years to get married? Okay, cool bet. No. So they decide to have a nice rational conversation about it. Oh, Heard you. Heard you. You did. You did. You did. 
good job. I'm side I am that conversation. Uh-uh. <laughs> now let's head over to Las Vegas to see Andrew and Candice. And Andy Pandy, who soon to be having one more arm on his bandit, is checking what he'll be kissing goodbye. They even label it Candice's apartment. You know, not your apartment or anything, or their apartment, Mr. Andy Pooh. Candice is getting out of prison in 10 to 12 hours. And I just can't wait. I can't wait. Oops, I seem to have left my witticism subtitles on. Oh dear, I hope there won't be any witty yet critical misunderstandings in this script. Anyway, back to the man himself. I bought some of the bigger things here in Las Vegas. Yeah, I saw that too. The screen says like 2200 and something or whatever. But cheap, it's in the offer at... We can do 2560. Ooh, a couple of hundred extra. Yeah, sounds great to me. Here's my card. You good there? Yeah, okay, I great. think we can make that okay, work cool. for sure. Yeah, okay, Mr. Soon to not have any money bags. It did end up going over budget by $1,000. Then Candice's mate turns up, and for some reason they put this soundtrack on it. Hi! Hey, come on in. Is she going to strip? Uh, should I look away? But no, she's here for the party. And all their mates turn up for a wicked bend up. I like it, it's nice. So who's this? Well, Candice is Denise's friend. She's a mentor ex-fellow prisoner, a confidant, and... She's been very supportive of our relationship. So now he's moving all this cool stuff into the place, and Candy's calls for one of those really heartfelt and warming moments they have. I'm in love. What are you doing? Well, she didn't respond with anything sweet there, but hey, maybe she's not like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyways, Denise sneaks off to the toilet. Big man, he's sprung. Oh no, they seem to have left her microphone on. <sighs> Feel good. I can't believe it's one more sleep for her, and uh, you know we'll be together. That's enough of that. Let's head over to Independence Mo and see what's happening with Ashante and True. And Chef Ashante isn't happy. I literally get every freaking picture that I sent came back. Which means one of two things: either he's in the block, but she's spoken to him, so she knows he's not, or he must have gotten something that he is not supposed to get from someone else. Well, I was hoping that Ashanta's storyline wouldn't lead her to losing a ton of money, and that she'd only just have to get over the emotional and not financial costs. So now she's thinking, Who the f are you getting mail from? So when True calls her up that evening, she gets straight to the point. Are you talking to somebody else? Is somebody else sending pictures or what? Because you're not doing nothing with contraband. And he gets to putting her fears at rest. Oh. Over in Gilbert, Arizona, and we're getting a visit from Ricky Pooh and Samantha. And today, ladies' man Rick the Dreamboat is flexing his drip on the seafront. Oh, <laughs> there, mister. Leave some ladies for the rest of us. But his bike ride is interrupted by a call from Samantha. Hey, you. And there's no time for pleasantries. Cycling about like a twat isn't easy, you know. It's, uh, it takes concentration. Can you call back? You have to be aware of your surroundings when you ride a bike. Yeah, safety first, you know, Samantha. All his fox-like reactions are needed to maintain all this handsome, you know. Oh, he's so smooth, like an American James Bond. Bye, hon. Oh, Damn it. So suave and sophisticated Rick gives up trying to look useful and down with the kids by cycling awkwardly in public and opts for a proper mode of transport. Hey! Hey, nothing, mister. What the hell do you call that? But if you're gonna be an arse in a car park, you'd have the decency to fully own that double space parking. You see someone slightly over the line and you think, pfft, they're a bit of a crap driver. You see a car blatantly in the middle of both spaces and you think, now that's a person really committed to owning their inner arsehole. It's one of those few times when arrogance is ever so slightly less irritating than competence. Anyway, back to dicks. Call to Samantha, and he's getting all hot under the Hawaiian pattern polyester. It's nice and hot. Sweaty. I think I'm gonna be sick. Rick's got a reunion coming up, and Samantha is concerns regarding a lady he hooked up with ten years ago. But it just so happens you'll be at the event. I really want to see you. Yes. Such a weird yes. Yes. I think they really needed the soundbite of him saying yes, but the best they could do was this one. Yes. Yeah, it'll be fine. No one will notice the stitching. So anyway, it's not at all that interesting, and uh, so here's the skinny. Rick wants to go to a reunion thing because he still hasn't left go of his past. But Samantha doesn't like it because she thinks he'll be getting all the girls. And he hasn't told all his mates about their engagement. Rick says that's just up to him. She says, you're hiding me. He says, I can tell in your face that you're not very happy. Because he's some kind of genius, and it's all fine in the end. I love ya. Then he says something which I think suggests he's never actually watched any of the show before. 
She wants it to happen even before she gets out. It's like, how does that even, how does that even work? Are you allowed legally to do that? And did it even get on this show? I hear that a lot of them come from groups on Facebook. But I can't imagine this guy, this enigmatic, charismatic ladies man, is much of a Facebook bullerer. You know what I think? I think it was someone like his niece Valerie or whatever her name was. And the casting people must have met him and thought, hmm, we've not had a serial killer yet. You're hired. Let's skip hand in hand now back to Ayuna and she's arrived at the family get together where they talk about babies and baby mamas. I would be <laughs> lucky number five, I tell you that. Sure, because after doing it four times, I'm sure you'll totally stop that behaviour because, uh, well, you know, you, presumably? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's totally how it works. Fixing a man project with goodwill and best intentions is always a winner on this show. Good job the family are on hand to make her feel better about it all. So in your heart, do you really think he does marry and say? So that's a yeah, lady's I'm in. Maybe you got some tips from Rick. Then Jamal's mom says, "That makes you that one for home." In case like me, you found that accent a little tricky. She asks, "What makes you that wonderful hoe?" So Iona lists a bunch of pedestrian things, you know, like like they do, do talking and things that haven't cheated because apparently this is amazing and unique, and apparently they're different. So so wow, I'm convinced. I wonder if Jamal's mom is too. I, I wish you luck. I'm gonna be surprised on this that you and Jamal make it because it's Jamal. It's Jamal. So Wayona laughs it off to be polite. But you know there'll be explosions later on. I just hope she the right one. She can really hold this thing down for you because. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Does she remind you of someone? And after some deep and incoherent, it seems like there's been some acceptance been passed around. We want to make sure y'all good now. Because it's your first marriage, right? Yeah, it's like your first marriage, uh, right? Right? <laughs> This is, this will be your second man. Oh, this the second? Second? Uh uh. Oh dearie. Iona may just have a couple of questions about that. Hold up, hold up. What happened to the first? Where is the first? Who was the first? I don't know about this. So which you'll probably say. No, I don't know. Good job. And that is all I have time to cover today. I shall get back to the rest of the episode, hopefully before the end of the week. Thank you so much for joining me, and it'd be great if you would subscribe to help my little channel grow. Please do come back next time for more silliness, or you know, we could click on one of these things. But until I see you again, stay beautiful, love to my three, you take care of yourself.